Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about Disney being phony and Disney being fake. And uh, this really isn't new no, news. No, not new. I have mentioned it many times. So we'll, we'll talk about this. I think we even mentioned it in previous videos. We um, have. So we have actually have worked in and around Disney for a number of years. Part of the time that we spent with Disney was being on their approved media list. So we might be able to shed a little more light on some of what's going on here. But um, the discussion is coming up again because a uh, Twitter user, X user, master of the TDS, has posted some receipts of, uh, you know, some fakeish accounts, uh, you know, posting basically the same thing on Twitter over and over. I think it was over like again. over Rachel Zegler. So they're trying to like, you know, do some kind of damage control in the situation. Yeah, yeah. So oh, I that's mean, about stocks and stuff. But I mean, I, my understanding it was about Rachel Zegler. I, you know, I mean, I'm sure he was focused and found this stuff, and I 100% think that he found it. I oh yeah, absolutely. I believe he did. Absolutely. But I'm going to tell you, this is not new, and I have been telling you guys about this for years. And if you watch the channel at all, you know this. Yeah, we'll talk about it because look, we just had HBO getting busted uh, last year using fake accounts to astroturf social media. And I know that this is a method that Disney actually does employ. In fact, they employ this method with media outlets that they own or that they've invested in. Um, now I can talk about a couple of specific examples when I was on their media list that they, that, you know, it was as if by magic, uh, everything that you would tweet would wind up on some website, you know, mm -hmm. if you're part of some astroturfing campaign. But let's, uh, let's talk about this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants guys get woohoo if you do um yeah so i mean just doing a little searching for disney astroturfing people have been calling them out for a while we've got uh, going back to 2007 they were busted astroturfing uh, one of their new artists uh for their record label they got apparently busted last year using fake people to post a positive star wars, star wars reviews so star wars like the disney star wars films you saw it heavily yeah back then now how i knew about this stuff it's a, it, i used to do i've been doing disney blogs for a long time okay yes, yes. you've been doing disney blogs for years as a podcast as a 10 blog. years now long the, time yeah so when i was out doing the disney blogs i noticed a thing on twitter it was a trend I noticed with Disney and a couple other companies, but I was mostly focused on Disney where they would have these groups of people that would follow them mm. and they would in lockstep tweet the same as similar thing, like word for word or something similar. And, or they would all just one tweet would come up from Disney and they would amplify it. They keep retweeting it, retweeting it, retweeting it to try to amplify it to try to, to promote or do damage control or whatever they were doing it like then and i remember thinking it was odd and i remember looking into it and like they could actually like there was a groups that they were they were across different studios it wasn't just disney that they only ever retweeted stuff or posted things like they would hardly ever post unless it was something like like some, that sound like a bunch of other people were posting at the same yeah. time yeah like this has been going on for a while the bot stuff has been real it's why twitter especially is ground zero for this shit why we've been telling you for years that most of the people on twitter aren't even real people yeah, and I think Elon Musk found that out the hard way. He, right. he bought it, and, and you know, he's like, oh, wait a minute. I way overpaid. I don't know why he didn't know that. I because way it's overpaid like, It was like, a you know, the most open secret out there. Oh, yeah. yeah. And there, there was a lot of these fake accounts were because these groups were in there, and they were basically, you pay them mm -hmm. to do damage control, to promote, to make it look like it's grassroots and organic, when in reality, it was all staged and bullshit. I've talked about it at length several times. So it's not not new and they really really ramped it up with uh like the last jedi and yep. rise of skywalker and when all the people were turning against disney and star wars you saw it really really go off the deep end then especially yeah and it's so much easier now i mean i i totally believe bots are involved because you know you've got access to ai tools right so, so master tds is completely right yeah i believe he's completely right and i want to be clear we're not disagreeing with him at all it's just that they've been doing this for yeah a long it's time. not new like I, i'm seeing um, people run with it like oh my god it's a new thing and it's like no I, I, no, I think, no, I, I think it's easier. I think it's easier to catch them in the act now because of it being AI and, and the verbiage sounding very, um, similar. It used to be able to use, um, spin tax, which is what they call it, which you basically could have some variation of the same phrase. Yeah. And that's what they, they did used. when yeah. I was catching it. It was a lot. It was like a lot of times. It would that. be like blank 
yada, 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 blank, yada, 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 hashtag. And it was all the same format and they would just kind of mm-hmm. switch a couple of words around. Yeah. And then locks at the same accounts would retweet everything they wanted retweeted. And they were clearly bought, bought and they were not real people and they yeah. were just, you know, paying some ad agency or whatever. Yeah. And that's, yeah, they do. Or that's what some they do. group out of another country to, you know, go and try to, you know, massage the data and make it appear that it was much widely accepted or they were being attacked or whatever they wanted to gain from using this kind of thing. Yeah. And I mean, we see it all the time. You mention anything about finances or whatever on, on YouTube and you get the bots. You either get porn bots or you get uh, NFT bots or you get, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It like, it keeps happening all the time, but yeah, a company like Disney, a company like, you know, HBO, they've got millions, millions, hundreds of millions of dollars on the line. It's nothing to them to throw a couple million dollars in an ad agency or something, you know, to, to save. If you can mm-hmm. save a hundred million dollars by spending two million dollars, you're going to spend two million dollars. It's shit, but it's what it, it is, what it is. They've been doing it on Rotten Tomatoes and all that before, too. I mean, oh, yeah. Yeah. this is not new by any means. So I kind of had uh, some some insight, if we can shed light on this, into how the machine worked, at least. Um, at least from, a me- from like uh, media coverage. F- from the influencer side of it, right? So Disney would do these shindigs. They would do these media events. And they got busted before they had to start disclaiming that they were hosting people. Yeah, that's why you had, the, you had to have the hosted. Yeah, because for the longest time, they would give uh, bloggers and podcasters and YouTubers free stuff. And in exchange, you were expected to say nice things. That's why they had all these bloggers like trying to be like, here's how you get to be on Disney's media thing. And the yes. first thing they said was only say positive, uplifting, nice yes. things. Yes. Um, so then they got busted and it was very important if they brought you in for something. And look, I'm going to tell you, they treat you very well. Like they bring you in for one of these events. They will put you in a nice hotel uh, you'll get to eat the best food. You get like unlimited, you know, theme park uh, unlimited fast passes. Power. Unlimited power. Yeah. I mean, I got, I mean, this isn't the brag, but the one event, I think it was Toy Story Land I went to. And I basically had unlimited fast passes on my mm-hmm. band. And I rode Avatar like five times in a row. And the cast member kept looking at me. And this is when, you know, Avatar Flight of Passage just opened. Uh-huh. It, it wasn't even open like a year. And she kept looking at me like, how the hell? Is he doing this? And I was just like, yep, I'm going to ride it again. You know what? I think I want to ride it again. <laughs> well, I got half an hour until I got to be smart. Yeah, I think I'm going to well, ride were, it again. You were in Galaxy's Edge before it was open. What I was in Galaxy's Edge when they were building it. Yeah. Yeah. They let us in Galaxy's Edge. Uh, I had to wear a hard hat and I had signed papers. And uh, it wasn't much to look at. We went through the the wall or whatever, but they took groups of us in and they were going to, you know, trying to explain where everything was going to be. And they had kind of the framework of the Falcon. Hey, up I'm not going like to lie. It was pretty cool. It I was mean, cool. when you got to do that stuff, we don't get to do it now no. because we're too honest, but yeah. you know, it was really cool. And well, well, I didn't, I don't know. I didn't get to go. That's a whole other story. You were, yeah, it's a I whole got other. screwed by our ex-partner. It's a whole nother story. That's um, okay. We sued her and won. Yeah. So, well, that was yeah. something else, but you know, <laughs> So, um, you, um, were at these events and then you yeah. would have to do like, I know there was procedures, like you'd have to, you'd go to write a tweet or they'd have you, okay, write something about this and take pictures and they, yes. they would check your photos. Yes. They would check everything yes. you wrote before you were allowed to send it. Yes. It had to be, everything was coordinated. We had handlers, uh, you know, you do these events and they were like, you have to use these specific hashtags. You've got to post this tweet between this time and this time. Let's see what you're going to post. Okay. That looks good. And sometimes they tell you, you couldn't use a photo like this. Look, um, it looks like the cupcake is melting in the Florida heat. Well, Disney cupcakes don't melt in the Florida heat. We need Bullshit. a different, bring out a fresh that cupcake. A lie. <laughs> so it comes, you know what I'm saying? Cause like, as soon as you take that damn thing out of the bakery, it's melting, but uh, little things like that. But the one that really got me was Use this specific hashtag. Okay. So we all, and they would tell us to all post at the same time to try to get this stuff trending on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and whatever. I mean, we're talking five or six years ago, whatever was big, but yeah, it was definitely Instagram was the big one there. They were concerned about and Twitter at the time. And then, um, as if by magic, all the media outlets that they own part of, or they invested in would do articles like, Oh my God, guys. They've got this amazing new cupcake at Disney. Everybody's talking about it. Hashtag amazing fucking cupcake or whatever it was. And it was like all of our tweets. So they coordinated it. And then as soon as we would tweet it, 
they would make a phone call and be like, hey, uh, Hello Sugar or Pop Sugar, whatever the hell that Pop, pl- sugar. Pop sugar. Yeah, they own part of that and they own part of Vice or whatever it was. Hey, Pop Sugar, uh, look at look at what's trending. Yeah. Oh, by the way, we own part of you. So get your bitch ass in the seat and type up an article about these damn cupcake tweets because we need. The, and that's Ooh. what they would do. And then somebody, another outlet that Disney owned part of, they would pick up that Ooh. post and run with it. I know a couple of times we found things first. They just started putting them out. We got pictures of it and Pop Sugar would write us and ask us if they could use the images. Yeah, because we, we were on the list. Right. We were an approved media source. We were part of the astroturfing machine. So not yeah, intentionally, but it not is intentionally. Is. That's just kind of where, like, if you get into the theme park stuff, if you're not doing it because you love it and you're not self-sufficient, um, all roads lead to, uh, becoming, um, Mickey's bitch. Basically mm-hmm. that's, that's how it works. And everybody that starts a, uh, Disney blog or a Disney podcast or whatever, if they're not just general consumer fans of this stuff, which we are now, but you know, they have the the expressed desire, many of them, to get on this media list. They desire Mickey. They desire Mickey. They want his thick gloves everywhere. Um, but I will tell you, 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 yeah, you're getting paid in cupcakes. No, you're you're selling yourself into basically indentured servitude. Like they literally view you as being an unofficial employee of Disney. And trust me. If you fuck up or you misname something or you don't post the right thing oh, yeah, at the right time, have the right trademark in the right place, they will contact you. Yes, pretty damn quick. They do. Um, also, if you don't say all the things they want you to say, they get mad at you. And if you and, say Toy Story Land is too damn hot, and not in so many words, but you're just like, yeah, everything's good except it's a little hot. Maybe it could use a little shade. Yeah, you'll hear from them. Then they put shade in anyway. And they put shade in anyway. But yeah, it's just like you know. <sighs> It is what it is, but this is this is not new. We no. we knew this before we were when we were doing just blogs. We did this when we were doing media. We mentioned it several times. We saw it especially heavy with the Star Wars, the Rise of Skywalker, and the Last Jedi. After yes. people didn't like it and it was falling off a cliff, you'll um you'll see it and probably I guarantee you with like Lightyear and all that crap when it wasn't doing well. It was in Strange World. It was probably the bigots, the bigots in lockstep. <laughs> the, um, I, you know, I think Marvel Comics. Not, I think Marvel oh, Comics. 100%. Uh, all this outrage, this uh, Comics Gate chud bigot outrage bullshit that's going on. I, I'm not saying some of it's not real. I think some of it is real because I've met some of these people and some of them are completely unhinged. But I think a lot of it is actually AstroTurfed by Disney because mm-hmm. it's their brand. They don't want the, you know, the Avengers well, or the X-Men to be associated with you know, all the chuds and the bigots and well, the Nazis. Reva in, in Obi-Wan, do I think some people probably said some shit they shouldn't have said? Yes. Do I think it was to the level that they made it out to be that, they oh, oh Twitter, and I'm talking about the horrible people and all that? No. Do I think that, that they were probably trying to amplify it to make it look? Yes. Yeah. As, and, you know, that's what they're going to run with because why would they put it even on their actual official count, account? You know why? Because they're trying to push a narrative, and they're using you know these these bots or whoever they paid for that to do it. And it's they always, do it all the time. It's always some like generic cartoon avatar. Well, not always. But flags in the bio. Their entire personality is this show. Or oh, I think they probably did it with Gina Carano too. Yeah, I, I have no doubt. I th- not them directly. The some of the people that wanted are gone. Well, here's the thing. I cannot wait for this lawsuit because Elon Musk is funding that lawsuit. And he would have access to the data. And it would be really interesting to see if Gina Carano getting fired was a result of somebody at Lucasfilm trying to astroturf to get her fired. And really, there was like, you know, two people that were upset. Well, they were doing it without rewriting Ripley. Oh, yeah, that was that was garbage. I don't think it was I don't think it was, you know. It's nowhere near little Disney does. I mean, they don't have the money for that. But like they were like trying to write articles and trying to do um, podcasts and trying to get all their friends to like say things and like connect people together that weren't connected and all well, this crap sh- to try to start this narrative and everything else. That Katie McCourt, she I, apparently uh, she worked for Lucasfilm. That's what I'm saying. She started out there. Yeah, well, started out, but she worked there. Before. Yeah, and it was it was a very elaborate. Like nobody has that much free time, and the no. whole whole purpose of that rewriting Ripley blog, podcast, whatever, was to basically defame YouTubers that and were And do damage critical control for Star Wars. For Star Wars. And then try to tie all these YouTubers to like the actual alt-right or some bullshit like that. And we got name-checked on that. And I was pissed. I was furious. I'm like, what the 
fuck is your your but deal? It's, it's just a big shell game, is what yeah. it is, and it's but it's been going on for years. This is not new. Yeah, you you found stuff going back to twenty two thousand seven, even before we were covering this stuff that yeah. that they were doing this. So that was on Wired, or whatever. This has been. This is not knew it all it has been going on for years it is nothing shocking or surprising yeah um is any more surprised they didn't do it honestly i think this has been I'll, I'll tell you the truth i think it's uh more studios than just disney and we already saw the hbo got busted i think they've been doing this for years um if you watch hail caesar which is a very good movie by the way uh the fixer josh brolin's character you know, they're, they're always talking about how to make the, the actors look good and how to, you know, take, you know, uh, take control of a PR crisis. And like, this has been going on since the beginning of Hollywood. It's just the, the methods are different now. You know, it's all about, because mm -hmm. again, hundreds of millions or potentially billions of dollars are on the line. We see it with people that hire like PR people and stuff. Yeah. Like there'll be like have a web comic and suddenly get a book deal. And then all of a sudden there's all these people going to their, that, that suddenly like one day they have like like 3000 followers on Twitter. And then, then like their count goes down and they come back with like 40, 50,000 followers. And everybody's like talking about their, Oh, it's the best comic ever. Yeah. But right before it gets published. So it, it, it promotes it, trying to make it look organic and quotes. You can't see my air quotes to try to get them to get more sales. Cause no, yeah, get everybody yeah. talking about it. Yep. It's just, it's a, it's a really old trick, but they're definitely going, um, in, in Disney's case now, before it wasn't so much, but now it's damage control is what they're going. And, and they stand, especially with the proxy we're coming, you better fucking believe they're going to turn that shit up to the umpteenth, you know, power because oh, yeah, yeah. they need to. And this board is so scared of losing their seats. They should that, be. Yeah, they should be. They're going to, they're going to really push this crap. So I have a hundred percent completely sure that everything that master of TDS said was completely true. Because this is not new. It has been ongoing. We have seen it over and over again. You can probably take anything that you think Disney would be really pushing positively or to try to deflect and you dig into it and you'll probably see what we're talking about. Yep. Um, yeah, here we go. Uh, back to The Last Jedi, Disney astroturfing to prevent spoilers. Um, it's, it's been going on for a long time, guys. It's just very, very obvious now. Plus, people know what to look for. And I think the reason they're so pissed off at YouTubers is a lot of YouTubers are more tech savvy and they're starting to notice patterns. And they're like, wait a minute. A lot of people have noticed patterns for years, though. Yeah, but now there's a platform to actually get, get that information out to a lot of people and be like, yeah, this is all bullshit. Let's show you why. You know, before it was like, people were like, oh, it's typical studio PR. And now they're like, no, no, no. This is actually kind of insidious when you think about it. And Well, now that they use TikTok a lot to do this stuff too. Yeah. And people aren't on there as, you know, as much as like, you know, Twitter, but I mean, they are, but I'm saying they're not looking into it as much, but I'm sure you'll probably find crap over there too. Wouldn't surprise me. The average TikTok user is, I don't think as intelligent as the average YouTube viewer, but as is my personal opinion, I think that we have a lot of people that just consume on TikTok and they don't really ask questions. Uh, that's kind of the platform is designed for that. That's my personal opinion. Anyway, are we going to wrap this up? Yep. Okay, guys, there you go. Another daily dose of dismal Disney. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Check out the audio editions of Clownfish TV and Clownfish gaming news on Spotify, Amazon, iTunes, wherever, you know, finer podcasts are hosted. Plus ours. We'll talk to you later. Bye.